Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Regression Therapy. I'm Monique Glover, hypnotherapist and regression specialist, and this is Steve Burgess. And today we have something a little bit different in store for you. We are going to talk a little bit about online sessions and how they work and how effective they are online and do a little bit of a demo as well, too, for people that are curious about how this all works online and what it looks like, right, Steve? Absolutely. Um, my sort of preamble to this is that um, my ex-partner who's a hypnotherapist reminds me of this regularly. I used to say that you cannot do this job online. You cannot do <laughs> hypnotherapy online. It cannot be done. Um, and I used to say that having not really done any sessions online, it was a typically ignorant prejudicial thing to say um and um then i started to do one or two sessions online and they actually started to go very well and i was rather surprised i i, I had to do these sessions online because i had clients in holland let's say who were asking for sessions they couldn't travel i thought okay we'll we'll try this um and then of course what happened then when the, when the scandemic started um and everybody's locked down so nobody can come out to do live sessions um everybody then moved on to zoom so as therapists naturally we did the same and what surprised me more than anything else was how well the sessions started to go um mm. there were no real difficulties as long as we sort of set things up in advance and my clients got the same powerful benefits and results from our online sessions as they were doing from in-house sessions mm -hmm. as a result of this i now work exclusively online so i only work online okay my clients are all around the world anyway but um i love working online and i now prefer to work online now i know you still see clients um, in your offices uh, as well as online but i prefer online sessions and i actually say that I think they work better because our clients are more relaxed because they're at home. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I remember for so many years of my career working from offices and, you know, my clients would have to fight the way through traffic to get to me. They'd maybe have to sort of drop the kids off or may, make arrangements for the children to be looked after to get to my office. And then they'd have to find a parking space and then they'd have to get to my office and sometimes in quite a tiz. And of course, especially in the first session where they've never met me before and, you know, they don't know what all this hypnotherapy stuff is about. And, you know, can they trust me? I'm, I'm going to ask them to close their eyes and rest back um, with their eyelids closed within an hour of meeting me. So there can be a lot going through people's heads when this is when this is the first session that just goes out the window. Now, people are more relaxed. They're at home and. At the end of the session, they can just turn the laptop off or turn the phone off or whatever and carry on getting on with their lives. So for me, I prefer now online sessions to in-house sessions. Mm. Isn't it amazing how your environment plays such a big role, especially if you're coming to someone with um, an anxiety state and you are you are in your home and the sounds and the smells and the feel of the fabric. Um, mm it's it really plays a big impact in your ability to let go and yeah. to relax yeah Very much so and of course as you say with anxiety people are already already anxious and then yeah. of course there's still the myths about hypnosis that it's some sort of weird experience which it isn't as we know it's completely natural um so that's feeding in so if we can take away some of that anxiety and make it easier for clients then it just seems to work so much better um and as long okay we've got to make sure we get the um the technical bits and pieces right obviously we need to see our clients and hear them throughout the session um and what i as we do with our clients we ask um we tell them before we do the session that we need to see the upper part of the body and one of the hands mm -hmm. um some people lay down some people are laying on a bed or a sofa uh, and they put the camera at the, at the side of them so we can see the upper part. Uh, some people will, we're looking straight on as we are now and they just put the chair back and they rest back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that the client can relax. 
can just let go a little and we can see what's what they're doing and as long as they can hear us then it just seems to work very well yeah i think i frequently get asked um is it safe to do online well what what, what happens what if something happens and i'll tell clients the worst thing that can happen is that the internet gets disconnected and then we dial back up and you'll realize that my voice isn't there and it, it trans is such a natural state it's not like oh my gosh you you know we're in the middle of like some surgery and I <laughs> it goes out and I left you there it's like you, you'll realize I'm not there and you'll open your eyes and reconnect yeah. the internet there's nothing there's nothing dangerous about that Absolutely. occurring yeah. yeah yeah I often say to clients you know if if you don't hear me for a while or even if there's an emergency at your end um, during the session just gently bring yourself out just and you know if you've gone quite deep just count slowly up to five and then open your eyes so you know there's all these myths about hypnosis people think that it's a sleep or a coma or as you said under anesthetic nothing like that it's just a state of relaxation and it's a focused state of relaxed inner awareness so you know if the internet goes down well you just gently come back or you fall asleep yeah so um it's perfectly safe and um, now that the past uh, four years as we record this having done oh gosh how many hundreds thousands of sessions online mm. this stuff works and it works so well uh, and if it wasn't working well then we wouldn't be doing it simple mm. as and even with regression, of course, regression, which is a deeper form of therapy, it works just as well as an in-house session. Mm. We can still regress into the past in ourselves uh, and release stuff. Yes, people get emotional in sessions. Well, all it means is that instead of them being in an office with us where at the end of the session we pass them a tissue, <laughs> they come out of trance at the end and they pick up their own tissue. So... You know, it's, it's just a normal state. If we're releasing emotions, some people get sad, some people, the body releases by making movements. We can see what's happening. We're watching that on screen. And as therapists, we are holding the space for our clients. Mm -hmm. We can hold the space just as easily online as we can actually in-house. Mm. And I think you made an important point too about being in control the whole time and even being able to count yourself out of trance that you are in control the whole time that you do remember the experience that we can't make you say or do anything that you don't want to of course we encourage you to talk with us during the therapeutic process because it wouldn't really be beneficial for you <laughs> to necessarily hold back but if you want to you absolutely we can that we're not going to force these words out of you that you are in control of your experience the whole time so you could lay there and say nothing the whole session might not be very beneficial to you but you do have that capability um to be in control in that way and you can also say something if you need to say something yes so yes. you know there's an expectation sometimes that when the therapist is talking i have to be quiet but i say to many of my clients at any time make the session right for you if you need to say something say something if yes. i'm a little bit fast slow tell me to slow down if yes. i'm too loud for you tell me to be quieter so you know you'll still have the control um and and the whole process works so well so it doesn't matter whether as we have clients all around the world we are thousands of miles away from our clients yes. and the sessions go just as well if not better than face-to-face in-house sessions mm. yeah so we thought what we'd do is we just demonstrate just how we do a little bit of trance and monique is just going to be a client um, and when we both monique and myself very used to going into trance we both have therapy ourselves we're both very um, keen on working on our emotional baggage our issues uh, not that i have many but um, we still, we, you know, we, we used to going into trance. And uh, so what I thought, what we thought we'd do is I'd just sort of guide Monique into trance as though we're doing a, a therapy session, um, demonstrate a little bit of how we get what we call the idiomotor response. Um, and then that will just give you a flavor of how we're doing it online. Mm. 
Yeah, and I think it's a good thing to note as well, too, if you are listening to the audio only version of this podcast on Spotify or um, Apple, that um, we will link the video to this and we won't include the whole trans process because if you are listening to a podcast while you are driving it's probably not such a great idea to be <laughs> guided into trance in this moment so we will link the video so you can see everything we're talking about it doesn't really translate well into audio form <laughs> we should also say that those people who are watching this make sure you're not doing anything that requires concentration so obviously you shouldn't be driving in the car and watching this anyway uh, <laughs> but even if you're doing the ironing it's probably not a good idea to do the ironing while you're watching this just sit and watch it for a few minutes and um you know just don't do anything that requires concentration mm. okay so first the first stage in our sessions i mean we're just going to run through this you know obviously in a therapy session we have very in-depth conversations at the start of the sessions with our clients but then when we come to the trans part the hypnosis part then what we're doing is getting the the camera set up as it were getting the angle set up because well, what we need to see is the upper part of our clients bodies and one of the hands or both of the hands sometimes so um basically at the moment monique's close to the camera i can't see her hands so if monique sort of gets herself in position uh, for the trans session and I find this you always kind of finagle the first session and then once you have your angle you just kind of you know it for any mm -hmm. following sessions mm -hmm. have to have it so. and I don't have a headset so, on but I know some clients they choose to to do a headset um, instead of using the audio whatever is more comfortable or covering your eyes some clients they find they're very sensitive to the light yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Um, so that's, that's not bad. I'm going to ask Monique to angle the screen down a little bit more. Good. So then I've got a good full shot of her in her hand. So that's lovely. Thanks, Monique. Okay, my dear. So uh, when you feel ready, just allow your eyelids to close down over your beautiful eyes. Just begin that process uh, of going inwards. And just do your best to tune out background sounds and noises. You know that your children are home at the moment, so they're upstairs somewhere. You may hear them clattering around. Do your best to let go of that. And just begin this process, please, of uh, tuning out the outside world and just tuning into your inner world. And a good place to begin is just by letting your mind rest on your breathing for a few moments. And just allowing your mind to rest on your breathing. And as you're doing this, this is the first stage very often in allowing the body to relax. The fastest and the easiest way to relax is through our breathing and just resting the mind on the breath as we do in a breathing meditation. It has very often this sort of relaxational uh, process to it and then one thing we often do is just take a, a short time just to allow the body to relax and what we often do is imagine a wave of relaxation flowing down through the body or we call this a fractional or a passive progressive relaxation where you can tune into initially your forehead and face and jaw and just imagine muscles going loose and smooth there perhaps then just resting your eyelids allowing your eyelids to feel comfortably heavy and relaxed and then maybe just imagining the relaxation flows down into the back of your neck and shoulders down your back, down your spine, to the lower part of your back. And just allowing your arms to feel loose and limp and relaxed. Almost as though you're just scanning your body with your mind, Monique, just going down through your body, letting muscles loosen and relax. 
Breathing relaxation down through your chest into your stomach, into your tummy. And then just allowing leg muscles to relax all the way down to the tips of your toes. And so this fractional relaxation is very often for most hypnotherapists, the beginning part of the trance experience. And what this does, it allows the body to relax. It allows the central nervous system to start slowing down. And it just allows the conscious mind, the left brain, the thinking mind, just to slow down a little bit. It has nothing to do right now. And this allows your subconscious to come through. And I'm going to ask your subconscious to come through into your right hand, Monique, by just creating that energy of floatiness and lightness and spaciness in the hand so it's as though the fingers begin to fill with weightlessness the thumb the hand and the hand and fingers can become so free and so spacey and so light and so weightless that at some stage it feels just like a helium filled balloon and as that energy grows and it gets lighter and lighter you can just let go of the piece of string beneath the balloon and just let the fingers and the hand float gently up into the air all by themselves, weightless and free. Sometimes as we're experiencing the hand floating in this way, we actually, we actually go deeper into trance. Sometimes we're not aware of the hand moving. Sometimes we're very aware of it moving. Sometimes... The other hand feels quite heavy and they sort of compensate for the lightness in this one hand. So let me thank your subconscious for coming through into the hand in this way. And in a therapy session, we'd be asking your subconscious to use this hand in a particular way uh, to signal to us throughout the session. But just for now, I'm going to ask your subconscious to just let the hand rest back down again. Almost imagining you're just pulling a piece of string down beneath a helium filled balloon and you just let the balloon rest back down again on the cushions. Sometimes also the downward movement of the hand will take a client deeper into trance. And there are of course different depths of trance, light, medium and deep. At the moment, Monique's just in a light state of trance. And if we took a, lot, a bit longer and talked to her about going deeper, she could move gently into a deeper state, maybe a medium state of trance. But we do therapy with our clients in light trance, in medium trance, in deep trance. The subconscious knows how deep it wants our clients to be. So we trust the subconscious knows the best uh, depth of trance for our clients in the sessions and we just allow the subconscious to take them there okay so let me thank your subconscious for just allowing us to do this gentle bit of trance work and i'm just going to ask you monique now just to let go of the lightness in that right hand for now just allow the weightlessness just to flow out of it so the fingers and the hand just come back to normal sensibility and then I'm going to ask you to slowly and gently come back to full awareness when you feel ready. In some of our client sessions, we'll count our client up to 10 and bring them back. Obviously, Monique is very well versed and experienced in trance, so she'll just gently bring herself back. And when you feel ready, have a good stretch and come back. How do you feel? Good. <laughs> Relaxed. <laughs> And uh, you don't remember all the hypnotic suggestions I gave you to start sending me vast amounts of money into my bank account. Mm, so no. You remember that. It's gone completely. I hope someone warns me in the comments. <laughs> 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 so that, for our viewers, is a standard hypnotic induction, as we call it, inducing trance. Obviously, mm. when we're in trance, then as therapists, we're using that trance state to contact the subconscious and in regression we're using the trance state to guide our clients back into the past in order to heal the present to give them a wonderful future mm. 
and Monique's just enjoyed a nice little bit of a trance break, as we call it. A few minutes of just gentle going inwards, and uh, it can be very rejuvenating to do that. Mm, ready for a nap now. <laughs> <laughs> there goes this conversation for today. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Steve. Okay. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks, Monique, for uh, <clears throat> for being the guinea pig there, and um, hopefully our viewers have enjoyed that and keep tuning in for more from uh, hypnos from the adventures of a hypnotherapist adventures of a regression therapist and regression therapists maybe bye for now thanks for watching bye